Hey y'all, hey, we are back for another review of How to Get Away with Murder Season 6, the final season, episode 14. Um, so we are back with Annalise. We left off um with her getting ready for her court date. So she um she's contemplating her first day of court's outfit and trying to figure out her scratch strategy and what she's gonna do to um you know, to win the case, to, to swing things in her favor. Um she's I mean, all the even even all the way down to her hair. She don't know if she want to wear this, this wig, which is going to be socially acceptable, or, um, you know, wh whatever she's going to wear, whether it's going to be a black suit that looks intimidating, and all this other stuff. But eventually she does decide, you know, I'm going, whatever I'm wearing, I'm wearing my natural hair. Like, I mean, I'm just going to be me, no matter how it turns out. So, eh, good lesson in being yourself, no matter how everything turns out, I guess. Sure. Okay, so... We're going to jump into it. Um, we're flashing back to Annalise telling Bonnie about Frank and the the the, the news of Frank being Sam's son. Um, and I also learned in this episode, I don't know how I missed it throughout the seasons, but I also learned that Annalise does know that Frank is the reason that her son died, which, okay, got it. But I don't know how the conversation went that still allows Frank to be in your life and to still be your, your hitman of sorts, even though he was the reason that your son died. I wouldn't be interested in being your friend no more, but, girl, forgiveness is a, is a powerful tool, I guess. I don't know, girl. Couldn't be me. That's all I'm saying. Um, anyway, so Frank is, um, so Frank is going to be the secret weapon in court. She's going to kind of use that to leverage, um, Hannah trying to take her down even further. All right, so, um, what, what they plan on doing is kind of blackmailing Hannah, you know, like, hey, you can be a witness for Annalise to testify, you know, I guess on her behalf, or, or you could, um, or we could tell the world that Frank is Sam's son, which means you had a baby by your brother, so do you want to embarrass yourself for, the, for everybody to see, or just, you know, help Annalise get out of the situation that you probably caused? That's what they're going to do to, um, to get Hannah to, to be on their side. All right, so, um, moving on. Oscar and Connor, they're, they're debating what Connor should do, um, yet again with this plea deal situation and as to whether he should let Michaela in on the, the new deal that he was able to cut because now he basically, either he gets to be charged as well or agree to the new terms and conditions of his new deal with the, uh, with the FBI. Um, and he's still, Connor is still in this whole place where he's concerned about, how Michaela's gonna feel and, you know, looking out for everybody else when at this point it's every man for himself. Nobody cares about the team no more. Like, um, everybody just gotta figure out what they're gonna do for themselves. Um, but I don't think Connor has realized that that's what we're doing right now. But, um, Oliver is there to continue to remind him, you know, Michaela's gonna be looking out for her bench, best interest and so is her dad, so we need to be looking out for yourself, Connor. Which is why it's information, but Connor, it's not sticking. It's just really not sticking. Um... All right, so Michaela is also doing the same thing. She's over there contemplating what she should wear and what she should say and what she should do because she's taking the stand tomorrow. And her dad lets her know, like you know, um, you know that that basically that outfit is too um, intimidating and that she needs to dress the part as a victim in order to to basically garner sympathy. Um, Michaela's going to go with the role of I'm going to garner sympathy and kind of. Portray the role that Anthony says basically been a bully and I've been a victim and you know I just ended up in the situation by happenstance of having been in her class. So um I guess that's the role that Michaela's gonna take to try to get out of this thing. Alright, so we, we make it to to the day in court and there's some surprise witness that's headed in to to testify against Annalise and lo and behold, it's aggravating ass Laurel. Um she is the secret witness for the for the uh, prosecution side and um we'll see what she has to say all right so laurel is laurel's role is the fbi has hired laurel to assassinate tegan's credibility so that so that they could she could be released as annalise's counsel i guess you know they realize that tegan and annalise is going to be a fierce you know duo yeah that'd be a fierce duo so uh we're gonna have to you know take this tag team down we'll have to just deal with Annalise head on so um Tegan's there to um 
tie Tegan back the, to the Castillos, which is like a, you know, they're a mob black type group. So, of course, she she can't be associated with that group. Now that they, that Laurel has come in there and proven that she is, Annalise agrees that, you know, right then and there, of course, she released that she's going to release Tegan and she's going to represent herself. Um, she wants to keep the show going on the road. She don't want to hire new lawyers. She wants to defend herself so she can, you know, just get the show over with, basically. Like, I, I can handle myself. It is what it is. Um, all right, so Hannah has agreed to work with Annalise by way of talking to Bonnie through her lawyer. You know, we've been you know, doing like some, some third party intervention at this point. And she agrees to work with Annalise, but only under the condition that um, she has an immunity deal and that there is a hundred dollar penalty, hundred million dollar, I'm sorry, there's a hundred million dollar penalty if Annalise mentions anything about the fraternity, the paternity of Frank to anyone else. So um, she'll 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 do it, but Annalise has to admit that she conspired to kill Sam, and she can't mention um, Sam being Frank's father, or she'll have to pay Hannah a million dollars. So um, you know, Annalise is, is still playing with the option as to whether she's going to take that deal or not, because Hannah is basically her only her best shot because Michaela and Connor have kind of said exactly what the FBI wants her to say, as well as um, Laurel has kind of torn down Tegan as well. So she doesn't really have a, a leg to stand on at this point. Simultaneously, everybody's looking for Nate and, you know, in court, around court, wherever he should be. And he, he ain't nowhere to be found. He over here is trying to cut a deal with Xavier's father. He's visiting Xavier. I don't remember his name, but Xavier's dad, Mr. Castillo, in order to reduce his sentence and take down the governor. So Nate wants uh, Mr. Castillo to work with him to take down the governor. Um, because, I mean, that's his ultimate goal, just to take down the governor. It doesn't really matter what it costs him. Um, so, you know, we'll see what develop, develops with that. Now, everybody is giving their opening statement, and the games have begun. Um, and Laura runs into Michaela and Connor in the hallway, and they ask why she's there. And, you know, basically they're forcing her to talk because she is still trying to avoid the, the answering the question. And they also want to know, also, now that you are here, where you been all this time? And Laura says that she has been an hour away. She's been kind of right around the corner. She's been in the next city over um, this whole time, and she's wanted to do everything she can to protect um What's a little baby name? Christopher. Christopher to protect herself and Christopher, and to do what the FBI wants her to do, so that they won't keep, they won't come after her or you know her son. Okay, sure, understandable. Whatever, Laura. I don't. Nobody cares about Laura. Whatever. Um, and they. We also found out that the FBI is making her say that Annalise ordered Sam to be murdered. Basically, they want to paint it out that Annalise put a hit out on Sam. Um, I guess, you know, just to add insult to injury. And we also realized that Michaela, at this point, we'll learn a little bit later that Michaela did not get this, but at this point of the show, we Michaela and Connor got five years, but Laura was able to get off with only probation. I ain't gonna say nothing about it. I ain't gonna say nothing about privilege, because I don't, I don't want to talk about that today. All right, so, um, Michaela takes a stand. She gives a compelling a compelling white woman tear-filled account that happened, you know, on the night that Sam was murdered and, and you know, basically absolving herself as well, you know, even though she was the one that hit him in the head and subsequently caused him to die, you know, we played the role that, we played it up like it was Wes's fault and Annalise made us clean it up and um, she made us hide the body and the only reason she was protecting Wes is because she was sleeping with him. Girl, they just they were just adding all types of lies on onto this thing. I said the FBI really want to take Annalise down. Like they're coming for the jugular, so yeah. All right. So now Annalise gets to cross examine Michaela and Annalise, you know, Annalise ain't going out without a fight. Annalise is gonna drop the mic on that ass by putting it out there that that Michaela was the one that got Simon deported. So how do we know that she is not a habitual liar? Because Annalise opened up, you know, hey, would you were you the one that get, you know, are you willing to lie to get your way? Or are you, you know, willing to do these things to get out of something? And she said no. So, and it's basically made her out to be a liar by playing the recording that, the recording that she was able to get a hold of that shows that she was the one that got Simon deported um, all those seasons ago. So, basically, that kind of blows her credibility as a witness because you've already lied on the stand. 
again, I'm a proven lie, not the lie that the FBI had fabricated for you, your own independent lie. Um, so, yeah, that, I mean, so she basically took down Michaela's the story and kind of made her out to be a, a incredible witness. Not incredible, but not a credible witness. All right. So once we've cross-examined Michaela, we, we go on break in the courtroom. And at this point, seven out of the 12 jurors are on Annalise's side. And um, she also goes ahead and agrees to Hannah's terms. And Gabriel shows up to court and he heard everything that Michaela was saying. So he meets her out in the parking lot and the break and says, hey, um, he, now he, he's aware that that uh, Michaela has had a part in Sam's death and he is just livid at the fact that she got with him after having had a role in his death and you know that it was you know he's just having a hard time believing that Michaela was able to fall in love with him and be in a relationship with him and do all these things with him even though she she had a hand in, in his dad being murdered okay Gabriel just again let it go you can't do nothing about it just, just let it go um Again, I apologize if y'all hear, you know, sounds, outside sounds, because I'm outside again, because my lighting is better out here. Yeah. All right. So, Frank. Frank goes to see baby Christopher and aggravate Nancy Laurel to find out what Laurel's deal was. And just insert some kind of sappy moment here about how they miss each other and they still miss each other. Blah, 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 blah. Nobody cares. All right. So, um, he asked her not to testify against Annalise because it would also place him at the scenes of these murders. And, um, Laurel told him, like, and, you know, either I, you put me in a position to choose you or my son. Um, so I've decided to choose my son, which means she's going to still testify against Annalise, no matter who's implicated and who else has to go down in the situation. All right, so we are on day two in court. And it's Connor's, current, Connor's turn to take the stand. Um, and as he's about to go up, Frank whispers to Connor that Michaela got a better deal. And he leaves him with that. Um, and so he starts to have another um, severe panic attack while he's on the stand. Because he just can't believe, like, you know, him and Michaela have been sticking together this whole time. And make sure that they, were, that they were looking out for each other in in these deals. And it turns out that Michaela didn't even bother looking out for him on, on this one. Which, I mean, again, I can't too much blame you. You, everybody, it's everything for himself, so nobody gives a damn. All right, so, um, Connor is back with the investigator. He's asking questions, um, and now he's all choked up and he's he's afraid, um, that you know he's been left out to take the fall for this. Now we're, he, and he, you know, basically tells the same story that Michaela told. Um, based on what the FBI told them to say. Now we have the cross-examination and um, okay, now now Annalise is, I lost my train of thought, now Annalise is cross-examining him and she reminds him that he did cut a deal and she also reminds him that it's going to be pretty difficult for you to be a gay in jail and, you know, just as a, just as a little way to put some, some terror and fear in him, you know, let him know, like, yeah, you cut a deal for five years, but that's going to be five hard years because you gay and they going to wear your ass out. Just, just saying. Um, so she tears apart one of his earlier stories, again, proving out, making him appear to be a liar to the jurors, um, because I guess when he on his application for being chosen as one of her students he said he went to some sort of conversion camp um blah 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 and she there was no recollection of this this converse said conversion camp which means he lied just to basically garner sympathy in order to get chosen to be in her class which again makes him out to be a liar so that's already trying to shift his credibility as a witness as well so she reminds him that um that he acts as, he has been acting in the interest of Oliver in the beginning in order to gain from oh okay gotcha so got lost in my notes so she she already tore apart his story she already proved him out to be a liar in some aspect and basically ruined his credibility as a witness but she goes further to um add insult to injury she reminds him that he when him and Oliver first went on a date he was not interested in Oliver. In fact, he was only interested in Oliver in order to get information on a case that they were working on way back when, all those seasons ago. So what that means is 
you basically used Oliver throughout that whole first part of your relationship, and now, you know, that's going to cause tension in his household. Um, so now Oliver and Connor may, you know, may have an issue because of what Annalise said, which is true. He, he didn't like Oliver at first. He just needed him to hack into some stuff and get information when they needed him on cases. So a fact is a fact is a fact. Can't be mad about that. All right. So back at the house, Connor is confronting Michaela about her supposed better deal. And she said that she said that Frank was just messing with his head. But again, in this episode, we know that that's not true. She did work out a better deal, but I ain't mad at her, so sums that up. All right. Hannah comes back with a counter offer, and I had already talked about that, and at least publicly admitting that she, she um, said Tim to be killed or wanted him to be killed, put a hit out on him, whatever the verbiage is. Um, and Tegan reminds her, like, you know, if you do go public and admit your, your role in Sam's death, you are going to tarnish your whole reputation. Like, you're going to use, lose, lose your um, license. You're not going to be able to, you're not going to be a practicing lawyer anymore. You're going to lose everything. And she was like, okay, that's, I don't care anymore. Like, that's, that, it just is what it is. Maybe Annalise Keaton, the lawyer, needs to die and, and basically wants she, so she can become somebody else. Um, sure. Frank meets Laura in the parking lot. And Annalise comes out of the shadows to ask Laura to show her some mercy. Um, and then she made up, made up the story about Anna, about Xavier almost killing Sam and her not being any better than her father if she decides to testify. Pointless scene. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, it's Laura's turn to take the stand and the two lawyers are arguing and um, two lawyers being Annalise and then the, the, the prosecution. And... Um, and this is, I mean, Laurel. Laurel's just overcome with everything that's going on. And then she bursts out saying that the FBI, FBI coerced her to say what she said. And the analyst couldn't be sleeping with Wes because Christopher is Wes's son. So basically just painting the picture like Wes is, is my child's father. So there's not really a way that he could have been sleeping with Annalise the way that the FBI wanted me to tell you guys that he was so that so what that does is call to question her previous statement Michaela's statement and Connor's statement coupled with the fact that Annalise had already made them out to be liars so it's looking good it's looking good for Annalise at the current moment so you know that was that was definitely a good uh thing to happen so um and then so I guess that means the Lord changed her mind and she decided to do the right thing as opposed to just doing what was safe for her and um christopher admirable at best i guess all right we are back on another break and she wants to go ahead and sign hannah's um nda terms and conditions um essentially ending her career and all that she knows at this point so this, this is the end of annalise as we know it no matter how she comes back in the future she probably ain't gonna be annalise deloitte no more so sorry. All right, so Frank has this moment with Bonnie where he tells Laurel, tells her that he still loves Laurel and doesn't want to hide from her anymore because they could both go down with Annalise and he doesn't want any secrets between them. Um, we're aware, Frank. You you never got over Laurel and you know that the way that things were left, they were left open ended, so you never kind of got the closure that you needed, I guess. But um. Don't string Bonnie alone. Hell, nobody will get sprung alone because we only got, what, one more episode and it's going to all be over. So it don't really matter. Don't even worry about it. All right. So Connor and Michaela are bamming on the door and they, they are so mad at Laurel, you know, why the, she's in the little waiting room or whatever. And they're, they're so upset at the fact that she changed her story. And this is where we've confirmed that Michaela Ashley is not going to jail. She, in her new deal that she was able, in her new deal that they were able to rework after Annalise had outed them as informants. Um, she worked out a new deal where she was not going to go to jail. Connor worked out a five-year plea deal. She worked out no time. She got something similar to what Laura was able to get, which, I mean, round of applause for Michaela. Work it out, girl. She she She's the new Annalise Keating, if anybody. But, um, yeah, so she ain't going to jail. Connor, you should have Worked out a better deal yourself and just worried about yourself like everybody else. That's all I got. All right. So 
why everybody's just sitting around talking Laura gets a message and it's breaking news all over the place and simultaneously wherever Annalise is located she's watching everybody's watching the news and they have just found Xavier's body they just found Xavier's body after Nate was the one that snapped his neck and Nate takes this information to Xavier's dad who was in prison and um under the guise of the governor it was the governor that did it the governor doesn't want Xavier to to speak on what he knows so the, the governor has killed your son so now you need to work with me so that we can take the stand against her and take her down so um Nate has been able to portray the governor once more as a killer and now has the Castillos on her side so they may be able to take down the governor or Nate probably would say chopped up necks like I don't know but we'll see we'll see what happens we'll see what happens Xavier Xavier's dad Mr. Castillo he's pretty powerful so it'll be interesting to see how those two powerhouses come back the governor and then the Castillos because they have been working together all of this time so now that they're going to be on opposing sides because of Xavier being found dead I don't know. All right, so Bonnie tells Annalise and, and Hannah. I mean, Bonnie also comes to Annalise with the news that Hannah is dead from what appears to be a suicide. Um, and Bonnie thinks that Frank may or may not have had something to do with it. Why? Because we get one final flashback um, to Frank telling Bonnie that he still loves Laurel. Well, after that statement, Bonnie tells him that Hannah and Sam had a baby boy. And then the scene, the scene ends. But I guess we're operating under the assumption that um, she told him that Hannah was his mom. And he just needed to get rid of her just one last time, one time for the one time. Now, that is not going to be optimal in, Han in the fact that Hannah is a great way. She was going to be Annalise's only hope to getting off on the charges. But, um... Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. We have one more episode. This week is the final episode of How to Get Away with the Murder. Um, it's, it's the end of an error, unfortunately, but we will see what happens because we have a lot of things to wrap up. We have a lot of things to wrap up. Michaela and Connor, um, their deals are probably off the table yet again. Laurel's deal is probably finito as well. Um, Oliver, he could possibly be brought in on charges. Also, Annalise, um, yeah, Annalise, I, Annalise isn't going to die. I just know that, that that's just not going to be able to happen in my spirit. But, um, yeah, that's it. So that has been my review for episode 14, season six of How to Get Away with Murder. I will see y'all in the next one last week. Um, yeah, and I'll see y'all then. Thanks for watching.